Ray, I've been talking to many physicists and philosophers of science who were trained in physics, particularly quantum physics, and the general perception is that the more we try to understand the fundamental aspects of reality, the more time begins to disappear as a fundamental entity and become something that is an emergent that we think is real, but in a sense is not fundamental. How do you begin to react to the, uh, to the aggressiveness of physics in demoting time? Yeah. I think it's part of the aggressiveness of physics in demoting philosophy. I mean, most physicists nowadays would say that philosophers are just bad physicists, or basically, unless they're philosophers of physics, they're just people who haven't caught up with what physics are doing. I think that's wrong. And you can see some very bad philosophy, particularly in relation to time, emanating from the mouths of physicists. So let's, let me hear it. I think, first of all, they lose, I'm not surprised they lose time. They're absolutely setting themselves up to mislay time completely. As far as I'm concerned, time is an absolutely inescapable aspect of our lives. The fact that I have less time left now than I did when I was a schoolboy is a fundamental inescapable fact. The fact that I sometimes have to hurry I'm sometimes anxious about the future or regret the past. All of these things are real aspects of time. And they're the kinds of aspects of time that physics can't cope with. And if a science can't cope with something, it either assigns it to another science or says that it doesn't exist. And often physicists, I think, think that human time doesn't have the kind of reality the physical time is. Yeah. Physicists would say that everything you're saying about, about human time is correct, but that is an imposition on the real world as opposed to apprehending the real world. There's a huge difference. They would say that the, 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 the physics of general relativity or of uh, quantum gravity unifying f uh, uh, relativity and quantum mechanics, the only way you'll do this is by demoting time, and that, that time doesn't exist except it's uh, 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 snapshots of uh, relation relationships between events that occur uh, or quantized in some way, and that sure, we with our biological brains have to deal with this fundamental reality and make an illusion of time, just like we see illusions in, in, in pictures, or just like a, a movie is uh, uh, you know 30 frames per second, but there's no continuous motion, they're just these 30 frames in our brain, sees it as motion because that's the way we are. No wonder they think the time that matters is an illusion, because you think what they did to time, first of all. The first thing they did was they reduced it to a dimension. Yes. So there it was on all fours with, in those days, three dimensions of space. Of course, that's a bit awkward and embarrassing because the temporal dimension does sorts of things that the spatial dimension doesn't do, or rather it has properties. For example, if you believe time flows, some people do, it's pretty obvious that space doesn't flow. And if you think that time has a direction, some people do, it's pretty obvious space doesn't have a direction. So that leads to a certain amount of embarrassment. You can deal with that embarrassment by really reducing time to one of four dimensions, in, in classical physics anyway. So ultimately it becomes a number. So basically time just becomes one of the numbers that identifies either a location or a distance between locations. Right, because you have a four-dimensional universe and so you identify every event in a time with four coordinates. Absolutely. And that coordinate event identifies that unique event. But look what you've done to time, you've stripped it bare. In order to make it manageable and handleable for initially mechanics and then the, the other, other sciences. But then there's a problem, because then science, the time does tend to disappear. There have been all sorts of embarrassment in trying to hang on to time, as you indicated. Who knows whether physicists will eventually decide time is a real thing. Uh, there are some very respectable physicists, of course, who feel it isn't real. Uh, and in particular, and this is where my real beef is, they think that tense time isn't real. Yes, this is right. I think there's an absolutely fundamental difference between my regretting what happened yesterday and my anticipating what happens tomorrow. Yeah. And the, the difference is, is, is that they uh, understand order. So the difference between uh, uh, yesterday and today and tomorrow is, is not a difference in tense, eliminating the tense, but it's a difference in sequence. So they recognize an order, but no tensing. 
Indeed, and that order itself depends on the inertial frameworks in which you're looking at the events mm -hmm. in question, so they can be reversed. Yes. So there's nothing past That's about something in relation to anything else and yes. so on. All of that is fine. And the fact remains that there's an awful lot of time that slips through their fingers. The really, really important aspects of time. The question is whether what slips through their fingers is what is the human perception of time as opposed to what time is in reality. Yes. I mean, Einstein, for example, in a famous conversation he had with the philosopher Rudolf Conep, said he thought that now lay beyond the reach of science. And of course, he famously also said that uh, we believing physicists think that tenses are illusions. I think that's again an example of scientists saying that which I cannot capture within my methodology doesn't exist. Just like neuroscientists say, I can't see the self in the brain, so the self is unreal. That, it's the same fault. And I think we have to challenge that because tensed time is very real. And I would like to put it to you that it's the, it's the, it's the ground floor of time and that perhaps possibly scientific physical time, um, tenseless time, so-called B-series time is actually second order, secondary. You can argue that. What you're doing is putting human perception above the physical equations of, of fundamental reality. So if you have human perception and you have the equations of physics, you're saying the human perception is the privileged position and we have to judge the uh, uh, equations. Isn't that just like when you're flying an airplane in the fog? and you're a pilot, you're always told you better watch your instruments because your perceptions are not correct. You may think you're upside down when you're not, or vice versa. Always watch your instruments, not your perception. That's fine for some particular instrumental purpose. And I, if I criticize physics, I do it on my knees because I'm one of the great beneficiaries of physics. The fact I'm alive is thanks to physics. The fact I'm warm at the moment, the fact that this place is lit. Every single moment of my life, I am a beneficiary of physics. So it, it's wonderfully instrumentally useful. The question is whether its uh, effectiveness is proof that it has, as it were, the fundamental truth of things. And I'm not too sure that the mathematical truth, which is the essence of physical truth, is the only truth or even the fundamental truth. In the end, in order to arrive at mathematical truths of things, you have to abstract from everything that there is. Maths, after all, is only the uh, outer shell, if you like, or the conceptual outer shell of things. It removes real content. For example, you can reduce color to set certain frequencies, or certain elect electromagnetic frequencies, but I'm not too sure that that is the truth of color. That is the privileged truth of color. The assumption, our tendency to privilege physics is, I think, because we're appropriately grateful for physics, making the world a safer, warmer, and more fun place. But it doesn't prove, that unless you're a pragmatist, but it doesn't prove, unless you subscribe to a pragmatic theory of truth, that the fact that physics works so well means it is, has, as it were, a monopoly on truth.